This is a close reading analysis of the song Holy Ground by Taylor Swift from her album Red, Taylor's version. The song title is referring to the ground the protagonist and the love interest walked on and existed on together. That ground was holy because this relationship and this connection was sacred to the protagonist. She placed a lot of value on it. She believed in it so much so that you could argue that she was worshipping it as if it were something divine, as if it were a religion perhaps. Hi everyone, welcome to this video. On my channel I analyze song lyrics very in depth. Through the lens of literary analysis, I analyze different artists, but Taylor Swift is one of the main artists I cover. So far, I've analyzed over 40 songs by Taylor. I will link my playlist down below for you. I also do tutoring and help with consulting on your own lyrics or your own poetry. I will link that information down below, and let's get started. Verse 1. I was reminiscing just the other day while having coffee all alone and lord it took me away. I like how conversational this is and how close it makes you feel to the protagonist. It also comes up as a diary entry and I say this often with Taylor's lyrics. They always sound like diary entries said to music. They're very eloquent <laughs> diary entries. I also like how specific Taylor's songs are. I always say that specificity brings forth intimacy and relatability in song lyrics. It establishes trust. So I was reminiscing just the other day while having coffee all alone. We can think about the protagonist as sitting there with her coffee cup and she's like, hmm, oh my gosh. While she is being the main character and living her best life, thoughts of her past love pop up. You start reminiscing on the past and then you write a song about it. So I love that story for her. And Lord, it took me away. Interesting, we have the diction Lord and this song is called Holy Ground. Hashtag religious diction. Back to a first glance feeling on New York time, back when you fit my poems like a perfect rhyme. We have some context. This relationship occurred in New York. I love the phrase first glance feeling. That to me is very eloquent. This to me is referring to a flirtatious sort of feeling. I think about like giggles, like nervous cute giggles when you're meeting someone for the first time. You're looking at them but then you look away really fast because you don't want them to know that you're looking at them. You're still kind of like embarrassed and shy because you're getting to know one another. A glance is something that's very quick and something that people often want to hide. So this is just very cute. It's like the feeling of butterflies. Having a first glance with someone is an action but I like that that action is being associated with a feeling here. Back to a first glance feeling on New York time. This also makes me think that the protagonist is no longer in New York. It makes New York seem far away. The fact that it's New York time also makes me think that it's something that occurred back in time. There's a distance to when this romance occurred and I just think this is really good writing. This is very satisfying. Then it says, back when you fit my poems like a perfect rhyme. Back when they met, everything fit perfectly. The vibes were vibing. Things made sense. The communication was clear. The protagonist was able to write many love poems about this and it all fit together in a way that was cohesive and logical. Took off faster than a green light go. Yeah, you skip the conversation when you already know. This song is so cute. This is a relationship that took off pretty quickly. The chemistry seemed to be instant. It's like the moment they met, they were just together. It seems serendipitous. You skip the conversation when you already know. This seems like it was faded. It's like a perfect meet cute that flows very seamlessly into a relationship. I left a note on the door with a joke we'd made and that was the first day. They were like together from the first day. That's one way we can look at this. I like that she mentioned she left a note on the door. This could be just a cute little lyric. I do think this could be literal. Maybe the protagonist did do that. It shows that the protagonist really enjoyed the day. This is a very sweet detail about this relationship or about this day. That was the first day. I like that all of this is being depicted and then at the end it's like that was the first day. When you're reading it you may naturally assume that this occurred over a few weeks but no it was just one day. I don't know. I feel like there's a very sweet, innocent tone to this song. Now let's move on to the chorus. And darling, it was good. Never looking down and right there where we stood was holy ground. Let's look at the first line here. And darling, it was good. The diction good here to me is important. I view this as positive. I do not think good is a bad word. It's not as positive as great. But to me, the word good is just stable. It's dependable. There's a stable foundation for a relationship to be built on. The word good, even when you look at it in all lowercase, all the letters have a circle, like G-O-O-D. If you line it up, all the circles line up. And if it's like sans serif, it looks stable. And I really enjoy like double vowels. To me, that brings more stability to the word and it makes the feeling more stable as well. This is a very niche question, but let me know if you agree or not about 
that. <laughs> Never looking down. The protagonist and the love interest, they were on an emotional high. It's like they were flying over the streets of New York and they weren't looking down. They were just going up, 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 up. They were elated with the emotions they were feeling. They weren't thinking of anything happening. They were just looking up onwards and upwards. And right there where we stood was holy ground. This connection they had was something that was sacred. It was something that was very much valued by the protagonist. It was something that was respected by the protagonist. I would argue that's because this was something rare. It's like this was kind of faded, right? The word holy makes me think of divine intervention. This is something that should be worshipped because it's so pure and wonderful. It was innocent and pure and good. This reminds me of the song State of Grace from this very album. There's a lyric that says this is the golden age of something that's good and right and real. The word good is interesting. It's in this album a few times. Maybe something will explain a little bit later. I feel a sense of stability with this emotional high that's also being represented. And when something is holy, I kind of associate that with stability. If something is holy, then perhaps it's understood and accepted as being holy by a group of people. Thinking about this in a more religious context, more spiritually, we can think about something that is just fated to happen. And when something is fated like this, it holds more significance. Verse two. I interrupt this video with a very special message from myself. This is sponsored by me. I want to let you guys know that I'm offering services. I'm offering a few different things. I can help you refine your own analysis skills to develop your own unique perspective about poetry, about song lyrics, about any written work. I've also been getting a lot of messages from you guys letting me know that you use my videos to help you learn English. So if you need an English conversation partner, I'm your girl. You can converse through the internet. I can help you with pronunciation, sentence structure, and random things about American culture that are not super intuitive. If you're a songwriter or a poet and want me to read your original piece of work and provide you with a very detail-oriented feedback, I can do that as well. All that information is going to be linked down below. If you have any questions about any of the services I'm offering, please message me directly through the website. Back to the video that you actually clicked here for. Spinning like a girl in a brand new dress. This song is so cute. I love it so much. It's cute, but it's very, very eloquent. Spinning like a girl in a brand new dress. When you spin around in a dress, you feel free. You feel very flowy. It's like you're in a state of flow. Like the dress is flowy, but you're emotionally and energetically in a state of flow and you feel light and you feel bright. I think like the closest emotion I can assign to it is the feeling of elation. We had this big wide city all to ourselves. The diction here, big wide city. That to me feels innocent. It's like someone is, in New York for the first time, it's like a new city, the lights are brighter, everything is novel to you. So this love and this feeling of love is perhaps new to the protagonist. This just comes off as a younger protagonist in my opinion. We block the noise with the sound of I need you and for the first time I had something to lose. They're blocking the noise of the city and perhaps the noise of the people around them, maybe the noise of people that don't believe in this relationship with the sound of I need you. This is cute. Also gives some codependency vibes which I don't think are that cute or that healthy, but you know, young love, I guess. But I do like this whole notion of there being noise around them, literal from the city, maybe more metaphorical, maybe people whispering around them or rumors or anything like that. They're blocking it out and they're concentrating on one another. It's like they're experiencing something together. There is like a holy sacred connection and there is like light illuminated around them because it's holy. It's like an aura around them and it is blocking out everyone else from being able to like touch them and infringe upon their love for one another. That's how I'm viewing it. I think that's really cute. I'm going to ignore the mild codependency vibes here because I love this song so much. I'm a holy ground stand through and through. For the first time I had something to lose. Since this says for the first time, that may be why this song does give me an underlying feeling of a very innocent and young protagonist. Maybe they were a little naive. I don't necessarily think they were. I think they were just living their life, but you could interpret it that way if you would like. And I guess we fell apart in the usual way and the story's got dust on every page. But sometimes I wonder how you think about it now and I see your face in every crowd. We do have confirmation that this relationship is over and for the protagonist, she says it fell apart in the usual way. Nothing dramatic. They probably just grew apart logistically the relationship wasn't working out the stories got dust on every page so we can think about this a few different ways it has dust because the protagonist has put it down and not looked at it for a long time right she hasn't been swiffering the pages of the book so it's something that happened a long time ago maybe she's reminiscing way into the future maybe this coffee shop is like in 2040 I don't know. Or maybe it's got dust because the relationship at the end was being neglected. 
by one party and when something is neglected and not tended to, not cleaned, it collects dust much more quickly. That's another way we can think about it. But sometimes I wonder how you think about it now. So the protagonist, even though this is something that's in the past, right, it's dusty, sometimes she thinks about it, not only from her own vantage point, but she sometimes wonders how the other party, how the ex thinks about it. She's kind of curious about it, which shows that there is an inkling of not interest, but like intrigue perhaps by the protagonist. This maybe shows that the split was more so amicable or like at least there was no like bad blood dot mp3 between them because if there was i don't think the protagonist would care how the love interest or the ex love interest is thinking about it and i see your face in every crowd this is in present tense right so the protagonist still sometimes sees the love interest in the face of an unknown person perhaps if she's still in new york if they had like a date spot they went to sometimes when she passes it maybe she still thinks she sees him there or she can see them sitting at their table he still has some residency in her mind and in her emotional landscape. And we have repetition of the chorus. The chorus here, instead of saying and darling, says cuz darling it was good. It's a little bit of a difference. When the chorus is repeated at the end, it just says it was good. So that's an interesting progression in my opinion. I find it to be significant, so I'll talk about it at the end. And then we have the bridge which says, tonight I'm gonna dance for all that we've been through, but I don't wanna dance if I'm not dancing with you. I cannot help but to think about the lyric in Last Kiss that says, I'm not much for dancing, but for you I will. I don't know why I always interpreted Holy Ground as being about the same relationship that Last Kiss was about. Let me know if you have some thoughts about that. It sounds like the protagonist is going out at a club to dance. She wants to heal through the art of dance. She wants to dance off, shake off all of this energy, all of these vibes, all of the remnants of this relationship that is now over. She also, while doing this, doesn't want to dance if she's not dancing with this person. She still misses them. She's still not fully over it, but she's trying. She's trying to move past it. Again, tonight I'm gonna dance like you were in this room. So while trying to dance to get over him, she is kind of like doing the male gaze thing where you view yourself as if a man is viewing you, but instead of ambiguous male, it is the love interest. She's dancing as if he was still there with her. I'm like kind of interpreting this through Taylor's perspective. That's why I'm like talking about a male gaze, but you can interpret this in whatever way you want. But I don't wanna dance if I'm not dancing with you. So she's not fully over this yet. There have been attempts to try to move past this relationship and to dance through the pain, but she still sees the ex's face in the crowd and she still wants to dance with them and is imagining them being there in the room when she's dancing. Now we have the chorus again. Let's talk about the beginning phrases of each chorus. First chorus says, and darling, it was good. Next chorus says, cause darling, it was good. And now it says, it was good. The darling here is not being addressed at the end. It just says, it was good. This shows to me that there has been some detachment on part of the protagonist from this relationship. The ex love is not being addressed anymore. And to me, that's positive. You want to be able to move on from relationships. You can appreciate them and look back fondly on them, but you want to move back with your life you don't want to remain stagnant in the same place or else we're gonna have a right where you left me.mp3 situation analysis linked below and the last verse is repetition of the bridge it ends with but i don't want to dance if i'm not dancing with you this protagonist has placed so much significance on this relationship it felt so sacred to her that it's harder for her to move on from it because if something is meant to be worshipped if you are in a relationship that's faded, it's gonna be much harder to move on from it. And this protagonist hasn't been able to move on from it yet. It's still something that perhaps she is still worshiping subconsciously. It's still something that is wonderful to her. And if you're in a relationship that's causing any ground you're on, even a dirty New York sidewalk to be a ground that's holy, that is rare. And when something is rare, it has more value attributed to it. That's why I think a protagonist may be having a little bit of a harder time in moving on. She still wants to dance with this love interest to dance with someone is an intimate act. It can be fun and flirty, but it can also be something that's very sweet and it's a very tender moment of connection. And the protagonist still at the end of the song wants to have that connection with this love interest. That's all I have for this song. Please let me know what you think down below in the comments. Feel free to check out my tutoring and consulting services down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!